Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. For today's video I wanted to walk you through how I painted this bee but not so much give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction but give you some techniques and tips and tricks that I use when painting in this very loose style of watercolor. For a list of everything I used in this video check out the video description below and please be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see other videos just like this one. So whenever I'm painting in this style of watercolor, I'm often doing something called wet in wet. So that's where I'm laying down clear water before I add in the paint. So when I do this, it allows the paint to sort of flow freely and create shapes and create sort of inspiration for other parts of the painting. So I don't always know what's gonna happen, but as things form, as shapes form, I use those to decide where to go next. So for this bee, I know that the wings are transparent, so I am adding yellow on the parts of the wings that cover over the bumblebee. They cover over the parts of the bee that are yellow. So I'm also wanting to insinuate that there is a background, so I'm adding clear water for the background and adding in some of those colors as well in the background. Now you can see that in parts the colors will mix together. Um, when you do that wet and wet technique and that can be a good thing but it can also be something that you need to control so I would encourage you to use your brush as a way of getting control I like to use a clean dry brush to lift out paint when it goes someplace I don't want it to go or when colors start to mix and create sort of a muddier color I use my brush to lift those out so as I'm making my way around a painting like this I'm sort of working in steps so I like to start with some of the lighter areas first and that's because I know that as soon as I get to the darker areas it's going to be hard to go back to those lighter areas. So for instance if I was to start with the black of the bumblebee as soon as I brought that yellow next to the black the black would want to bleed into the yellow no matter how dry it was it just has this tendency to re-wet itself and then bleed into the yellow. So I'm making my way around the painting and adding quite a bit of splatters and I do this when the painting is still wet because it creates quite a lot of variation. So as soon as I put splatters over wet paint, you can see that some of them bled in and some of them stayed as these cute little droplets. And I can control how many I have by lifting some out with a paper towel or adding more if I want more. I use the blow dryer a lot in my painting process simply because I don't have as much patience as I probably should. So I'm starting in on the body using the same technique as I did for the background and the wings. I'm just adding clear water first and then I'm dropping in the colors I want to appear. So I'm using a fairly bright shade of yellow as well as a yellow ochre. And as they blend together, they just create um, the color that I like. So I'm doing all of the yellow parts of the bumblebee to start. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of pink, a little bit of red. I just like to have some colors that aren't necessarily in the reference photo, but are sort of fun to have in the bee itself. So I find that when pink bleeds into yellow, that it looks really good together. So I do that a lot. Using my dagger brush, I'm going in and adding some lines to start creating that furry texture. To create my blacks, I like to build several colors over top of each other, so I'm never just going to come in with straight black. I'm always going to try and build colors over top of each other. And I want that area to dry now, so I'm going into the wings and I'm going to start adding a few of the lines, bouncing around the painting. It's hard to tell you exactly what I do sometimes simply because for me it's a very intuitive process and one that involves a lot of moving around and a lot of waiting for one area to dry while I get to another area. So as I mentioned before, I'm always sort of adding splatters. If I add them at multiple stages of the painting, I just find that it creates a little more interest than simply adding them at the end. I like to use clear water over top of those splatters too because that creates a little bit more variety. So I really love to use a dagger brush. Um, if you don't have one, I can't recommend it enough for that fur texture. It gives you a lot of control because you can use the side of the brush to add quite a lot of paint down, but you can use the tip of the brush at a rapid pace to create lots of fur or hairs or whatever you need to create that involves a lot of lines. If you vary the pressure, you can get different variety of thickness, 
be sure to always be kind of moving around and never keeping your brush going one simple way. In nature, hair doesn't work that way, so it's nice to have a lot of variety in the painting as well. I'm already starting to go into the wings now to create some of those lines that you see. And you'll see that I come back to that a lot, so I might do a little bit now, but then I'll come back to it later. Just deciding how much detail I want to have in those areas. I find the beauty of watercolor is that it is so layered and having areas that dry and go back to it and then let them dry again, it just creates a lot more interest in the painting. So don't be afraid to have your painting be made up of several layers of paint. I just find that there's something to be said for building up over time versus trying to get a really thick layer down on the first go. And I think that applies to watercolors or acrylics or oil paints or anything. Anytime I'm working with any medium, I like to have more transparent layers to start and I start building up. So now I'm gonna come in with some watercolor pencils. I don't always use these, but I thought for today's painting, it would be kind of fun to add a few little um, details using pencils. What I like about watercolor pencils for this type of work is that if there's anything you don't like, it's easy enough to blend it in because they blend really well with water. That being said, if you do only have pencil crayons on hand, those would work as well. You just won't be able to blend them the same way. So now that the yellow is fully dry, I'm able to come in and start adding that dark color. I'm not using black. I actually don't have any black in this painting. I'm using all Payne's gray for the blacks, as well as a mix of Prussian blue and the deep purple. So because I wanted this to be a fairly, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like contemporary style of painting. I'm using some patterns that definitely don't appear on the reference photo or anywhere in nature. So I'm doing some little cross hatches. I'm doing some little like, almost like little bubbles on the bumblebee. Um, just creating a lot of different fun, little playful aspects. I think with a bumblebee, you can get away with quite a lot just because they are such a fun, whimsical little insect that you don't have to be, take it too seriously. You don't have to make it look like the reference photo. You can just have a lot of fun with it. And there really is no right way or wrong way to add those little touches. So on the reference photo, it looks like the top is kind of shiny. So I tried to indicate that by leaving the top a little bit lighter and then working my way and getting darker towards the outsides of that section. Now, because I know that watercolor dries so light, I'm continuously adding paint to it and darkening it. That's just based on experience. So you may find that as you are layering your paint, it keeps drying lighter and lighter. And that's just something that you'll get used to knowing how much to add. So for the front of the bee, I wanted to make him quite furry. So you'll see I exaggerated some of those hairs even more than they really are. I just really like that aspect of the bumblebee, so I decided to play it up. So I find with this style of painting, there tends to be, um, in the words of Bob Ross, happy little accidents that happen. And I really enjoy playing some of those up. So you'll notice when I soaked up some of the color that some lifted out and created these almost transparent spots on the bumblebee. So then I took my pencil crayon and I circled those and sort of made them more obvious because I just really liked those areas. Um, that's something you can do with watercolors. I find if they dry in a way that creates blooms or dry in a way that creates shapes that you're really drawn to, you can actually bring even more attention to them by outlining them or using white paint. I just find that's kind of the fun part of watercolors for me is that I don't always know how the paint is gonna turn out before I start. So now's the stage of the painting where I'm bouncing around and adding those finishing touches until I get it the way I want it. So I'm deciding how much detail I wanna have, how much I wanna keep adding. I find these pencil crayons so much fun to work with. So you can see me hesitating and going back to them. And that's just because I'm not always sure where I'm going to go. So I'm playing around knowing full well that if I don't like it, I'm just going to lift it out 
And the way I lift out the color is just by getting it wet and then using a paper towel to lift it out. And I might find that I don't like it the next day. It may not even be the same day I'm doing it, but I know that I have that freedom to change it. Now, some of these I will wet and remove, but I like to add quite a bit so that I can kind of look at it and say, okay, which ones am I happy with? So I was gifted these watercolors by KMS. Um, they were kind enough to send me a sample pack and I just pulled them out today. I can't believe I hadn't started working with them earlier. Um, they are super fun. I love the gold. It is an incredibly strong gold. Um, some watercolor golds don't have as much, I don't know what you call it, pigment to them, um, but they don't show up well. But this one, anytime I added it, anywhere I added it, it was like putting down a gold marker. I don't know if you guys have ever worked with those 14 karat gold markers, but they're quite strong. And this felt a little bit like working with that. Like I went over black and it was, you could really see that gold. So now I'm covering up some of the pencil crayon I didn't like. I'm reinforcing some of the black that I really did like. And I do have some metallics that I brought in there that you can only really see when you see the painting in person. But here is my close up of the finished piece and hopefully you can see where I use those metallics. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun watching me paint this bumblebee. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna see other tutorials and videos by me. And please hit the like button or leave a comment if you have anything you wanna see me paint next. Have a great day.